Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Closed Loop Response of a DC DC Converter and Why It Won't Be As Expected. This is the first part of this video, and in this video we will see first an introduction, then we will show how to obtain the closed loop response of a DC-DC converter, next we will show the expected response and the actual response, then we will follow with an investigation why the response is not as expected, and along the video we will see several LTS based simulations to verify the different results obtained in the theoretical analysis. This is another video in this series. We have seen previously these other three videos related to characteristics of DC DC converters in closed loop. We have seen how to obtain the input impedance of a DC DC converter, how to obtain the output impedance, and finally, how to obtain the audio susceptibility of a DC DC converter. If you find these videos interesting, please consider subscribing to this channel so you won't miss any video, and also you will help others to find these videos. So let's start explaining why it is important to know the closed loop response of a DC DC converter. The closed loop response refers to how the converter is going to behave when we inject a perturbation into the reference voltage that we are applying to our converter in closed loop. This perturbation can be a step transient or can be a sinusoidal perturbation. So if we apply a step transient, we can change quickly the output voltage of the converter, increasing the voltage or decreasing the voltage. So we want to know how is going to evolve this voltage when we apply this step transient at the reference. Other possibility is that we inject a sinusoidal perturbation into the reference superposed to the reference level, so this perturbation is going to appear also superposed to the output voltage and we want to know what is going to be the amplitude and the phase of this perturbation. Applying a step transient at the reference voltage can be useful to quickly change the output voltage in our converter for some specific applications. And applying a sinusoidal perturbation can be also useful, for example, if we want to transmit information superposed to the DC level at the output. This can be employed, for example, in wireless power transfer to transfer information from the primary to the secondary or also in LED applications to transfer information superposed to the light emitted by the LED. As we have seen in previous videos, especially in this one, Power Electronics number 3, we can model our DC-DC converter in open loop from the input using the input impedance of the converter and from the output we have these three different transfer functions which are the output impedance of the converter, the audio susceptibility transfer function and the control to output transfer function. We can represent our converter using these block diagrams or we can use also this equivalent circuit in which we have the input impedance, the control to output voltage source, the audio susceptibility voltage source and the output impedance in series. So with this we can obtain the closed loop response of a DC-DC converter as we are going to see in the next slide. Here we can see the closed loop block diagram of our DC-DC converter. In blue we are showing the different blocks corresponding to the closed loop operation. Here we are measuring the output voltage using the sensor and filter H. 
we compare the signal with the reference voltage and send the error into the compensator, then into the PWM generator, and finally into the control to output transfer function. So if we analyze this loop, we can get that the control to output transfer function in closed loop, which is the output voltage over the reference voltage has these expressions that we are showing here. In this expression, as we know, this part in the denominator is called D and it is the loop gain of the converter. We are going to use the same example as in previous videos. We are using this back converter with these different values that we can see here. We are implementing a PI compensator with this expression and as in other videos we are implementing the compensator using this diagram based on an operational amplifier. So this is the response of our compensator and we are calculating the zero frequency of the compensator with this value as we have seen in previous videos and with these two parameters corresponding to the capacitance C2 and the resistance R1 and R2 we are implementing our compensator. Also in this previous video, Power Electronics number 3, we have obtained the open loop control to output transfer function, which is shown here. So with this we have now all the information to obtain the closed loop response of the back converter using this expression that we have seen before. Because in the compensator we are going to have always a pole at the origin, the value of the gain of the compensator at zero frequency is infinite, so the gain of the closed loop response at zero frequency is 1 over the gain of the sensor at zero frequency, in our case is equal to 1. And the other interesting point is the gain of the closed loop response at very high frequencies, which is going to tend to zero. So now we have all the information. We can plot the transfer function using Win Python. So here we have, as usual, the values of our converter, the modulator gain, the values of the PI compensator. This is the control to output transfer function the compensator, the sensor, this is the loop gain, and this is the closed loop as we have seen before. So here we are plotting the body, and with these statements here, we are also printing several points of the transfer function. From this script, we obtain this body plot that we can see here, this is the magnitude of the control to output transfer function in closed loop and this is the phase of the transfer function. And here are different points corresponding to this body plot. If you want to have more information about how to obtain these body plots using WinPython, you can take a look at these two videos shown here. Now we are going to check this transfer function using LTSPICE. We have seen in previous videos that we can do this in three different ways, using the actual circuit, using the average circuit, and using the small signal circuit. Today we are going to use only the small signal circuit because it is much quicker. So we have here, as we have seen in other videos, the small signal signal circuit corresponding to the back converter operating in continuous conduction mode. So now we are implementing closed loop operation by measuring the voltage here at the output. We send the voltage into the compensator and then the compensator generates the value of the duty cycle that goes to this current source here and also to this voltage source here. 
So because in this circuit everything is small signal, we can perform an AC analysis using LTS bytes. What we are doing is to use this parameter here of the voltage source, the AC parameter equal to 1 volt, and then by doing this dot AC analysis we can obtain the corresponding body plot of the control to output transfer function. And here we have the results of the simulation in comparison with the theoretical results obtained from the WinPython script. So this is the theoretical response and here we have the response obtained from LTS bytes. Here we have the magnitude of the transfer function and this is the phase of the transfer function. If we check the different points we will see that they are not exactly the same. For example here we see that the phase of the transfer function goes higher than zero degrees and then decreases but here in the theoretical transfer function the phase is always below zero degrees. Also, the values of the magnitude are not exactly the same. Here is something like 8 dB maximum and here we have something like 12 dB. So there are small differences between the response obtained from the simulation and the response, the theoretical response obtained from the mathematical analysis. So this is the question that I'm going to leave to you to investigate why there is this difference between the theoretical analysis and the simulation from LTSPIs in this control to output transfer function in closed loop. So please let me know your ideas and your comments on the comments section of this video and we will see the answer to this question in the next video. So I am looking forward to receiving your comments. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.